we are back on this job where we did a concrete patio and I wanted to show you what's going on with this property so take a look at what happens with this water seeping out all these properties across here have this water seeping out And so the customer called and said she wanted to do something about the side yard here. So we put in about 50 feet of French drain. I guess it was last week. And look at what's going on here. This, this pipe right here ends right there at the gravel. It's a perforated pipe. Look at how much water is flowing through there. And so we had we had talked about doing a French drain down to the curb, and then if she needed more, we could, do, we could do more. And within a week, she called me and said, let's do more, because this is all dry right here. And so, last week, it was a swamp over here. So look at this. This is all wet right here, and it's seeping into the trench here. It gets in the gravel, and it floods up the trench, and then it gets into the perforated pipe. And so you can see here, water is making its way into the trench and she just wants a French drain all the way up through there. So that's what we're here doing. So this is a classic case of, she had major flooding going on back here. And she hired me to fix this problem, which we did. And she was so impressed with it. You can see the water. I was over here the other day and the water just runs right in this channel drain right here. And if you look over here, the water's doing the same thing. It's just running across here, making its way onto the concrete and running right into the channel drain. And so she, she's been so pleased with how well this is working again. This, this whole, this whole, this whole neighborhood, this, this area is like seeps water. And so, once that was corrected, then this became a bigger issue where it wasn't as big of an issue before. So we did the first section of channel drain, or I mean of uh, French drain, and she was so happy with it, she said, come on back and do the rest. So, that's what we are here doing. A French drain is used to collect non-point water. So here you can see this entire yard is just seeping with water. And so what I'm doing here is I'm digging out a trench and it's critical that you get rid of the dirt that comes out of the trench. Now when we did the section of French drain down at the road, we hauled that away in the dump truck. But here you can see what I'm doing is I'm putting the dirt on either side to try to build it up a little bit. And so you take that dirt out of there and you replace it with gravel. And so water will flow through gravel. Water flows into gravel. And instead of just sitting on the surface like it's doing now because it can't seep anywhere, it's going to seep into the gravel and it's going to end up in our pipe. And so you can see here in the next clip that once we dig down a little bit, the, the dirt's all dry. It's completely dry under there. And so that's a really, really good sign when you're making a French drain and positioning it. So I wanted you to take a look at what's going on here. Here we have wet slop right here. But once you get down a few inches, you can see that we've got dry dirt. And so what that means for a French drain is it means that this is all surface water that's just kind of hanging around here. It's probably flowing down from the hill and it's probably staying at this level. So when we dig this out and put gravel in here, what's going to happen is all this is going to ooze into the gravel, fill up the trench like it's doing right here, and then it will flood into the holes of the perforated pipe, and then it finds a path of least resistance down to the curb.
And so that's how a French drain works. It's, a, it, it's used to collect non-point surface water and subsurface water. So we're going to have our trench go all the way down and continue on with what we have already done there. So I'm also going to take some of this dirt and build up this low area here and then try to make a little swale going into the new French drain. Once the dirt comes out of the trench, gravel has to go back into it. And this is a step, there's no real easy way around this. You simply have to put a ton of gravel in there. And so here you can see I switched my 24 inch bucket for a 36 inch bucket. And I'm reaching into the back of the dump truck with, with the bucket, grabbing some gravel and dumping it into the wheelbarrows. And you can see we're just running wheelbarrows right now. We've got these pieces of plywood laid out and they, they work really well for, for running the wheelbarrow along them, but they're a huge pain because they get covered in mud and soaking wet and really heavy, but it's still worth it to lay them out. And luckily I've got a couple of hardworking guys with me and they're just running these wheelbarrows full of gravel back, back there. And so you'll see in a sec that you put a little bit of gravel in the bottom of the trench and then you lay your perforated pipe in and then you fill the rest of it up with gravel. And again, there's no easy way around this. They sell sections of pipe which are covered with styrofoam peanuts that try to act like this. But again, there's just there's no substitute for bringing in. I think we brought in about 12 tons of gravel for this job, for this French drain. There's no substitute for it. We are somewhat retrofitting this French drain in here. And so this pipe is messing with our grade, but this is part of our system. And so everything from here on out is falling really well. So we're gonna dump our French drain perforated pipe right into this and then start another one and tie it into what we have put in last week. And so that will let us maintain our grade, even though it's a big pain in the butt, it's the best way to do it. It's tempting to just throw the pipe in here and cover it with gravel. But if we do that, it won't work quite as well. And so that's what we're working on now. It's real thick. You can use it in standing water. I'm not sure that I like it though. Down. Yep, you need to go down a little bit. Way down, about three or four inches. Right. Couple inches. Yep, just jump on it. Jump up and down on it. That's it. That's it. Uh, pull, pull that out and we can probably turn the... Pull that nipple out real quick. And we can probably turn the Y. There it goes. That's it. Sweet! That's it. So in other words, I need to drop the channel
There you go. Is that it? Yep. I think we're good. I think we're good right there. Yep. Here we're placing our first segment of perforated pipe and perforated pipe has holes in it and this pipe I buy and it's schedule 40 and it's got pre-drilled holes in it and the holes need to face down so that when the water floods into the trench it will flood into the holes which are pointing down and then it will flood into the pipe and the pipe represents a path of least resistance so once the water floods into the pipe it flows and that gives room for more water to flood into the pipe and that's essentially how a French drain works and so you often see us with these French drains we really pay close attention to our grade too so you want this pipe to be fairly level with just a tiny bit of fall because it needs to be level because when the when the water floods into the trench the water is going to flood in the trench level and so it will make its way into that pipe and out of there here we have a short 90 a female adapter and a plug so this will make up the clean out at the end of the French drain and what I'm doing now is I'm going to drill some holes in this cap and that way they will not let a it'll be a vent for it so that will allow air to flow through there so let me get that done really quickly Let's do the same thing up at the end there. Get this thing covered up. We just ran about a thousand wheelbarrows of gravel down through here. We had our boards set all the way. So this is what it's gonna look like. And like I've mentioned before, I take my French drains all the way to the surface. So there's gravel all the way to the surface. And that's gonna keep the French drain cleared for as long as possible. And these boards, the wheelbarrows full of gravel sure roll nicely on them, but they're, they get wet and heavy and covered in mud. So it's a love-hate relationship. And Jeremy gets covered in mud. So it's a love-hate relationship with these boards. We are back on this job. I brought in some reinforcements. It's still pretty sloppy out there. Take a look at the mini. So, but we got to get this done. So, it had dried out a little bit. And we were able to, a lot of hand raking, but we were able to get the grade I wanted. So, the guys are getting things seated and strawed right now. So that grade's looking pretty good. How are we doing on straw? All right. Oh yeah, we got another bail after this. So there's our clean out. And that's also, since we drilled some holes in it, it's also acting like a vent for the top of the French drain. I am back out here. Yep. We had a pretty good rainstorm last night and I wanted to check on this French drain and see how it was looking. So it's been maybe a few days since we were here last. So take a look. That's all water that's flowing out of that French drain that pretty much starts at that first gutter there. And then this one is flowing from the top part of the French drain. So that's working pretty well. I wanted to compare that with this one over here. So this, this whole area just like seeps water. So look at all the water right here. And this is the neighboring yard. 
That is what a corrugated system looks like. And you can see just how wet that yard is compared to my system here and how dry this yard looks. So I'd say this is looking pretty good. And that's a lot of water that's, that's finding its way out of here. 